let's use a function in a notebook. OK. So one of the functions that I find myself using over and over is this. Uh, so I'm gonna, I mean, by the way, I'm using this baseball data set. I think I've seen. I think we've seen it before. My favorite thing to do with the data set, personally, is to figure out what are the unique entries in every column. That's a really quick way of just scanning through the data, assuming you have one variable per column. <clears throat> and so I can scan through that, and that snippet of code, rather than having to try and remember what it is every time, I would like to just have it uh, in a Python function that I could call later. I'm going to show you how to do that. So uh, cat here is a a function that displays the contents of a file. So I've taken my functions.py, and in that text file, I've put some Python code. So I'm just showing you basically what's in the file. So now that I have that file, I can do different things with it. So this cell magics, these are Jupyter specific things, and basically they allow you to import code from other files. So that's pretty tricky. Now that I've got the function loaded in from that file using the run command, I can reference that file. Cat is a command that only runs in, but the run is a cell magic for Jupyter, so it's uh, operating system independent. So the cool thing is I've, I've taken that content in the file, and I've made it available to me. And so that means I can reference it here. And that runs as you'd expect. It runs the same function because that code is just the function in a file. So you're thinking, great, I've solved all the problems. I have code that I can just give to different notebooks. The problem is, if you're using this run function, it kind of hides what the file contents are. It doesn't actually show you what functions were made available. So you sort of have to have a mental model of what's in your file and, and what, what can you call. Exactly. So there's this other thing, which is cool. So load my functions.py, it does what we're looking for. It actually makes that code available in the notebook as uh, a cell of code. So that's, that's way different, right? Rather than just loading it off of disk, it makes it into a cell with code. That's like magically creating code from a file. It's pretty cool. The pro <laughs> there's a trade-off, though, right? Now that you've loaded it into the notebook, it's separated from its original source. So if you, huh? Copy pasted. But the problem is you're now disconnected, right? The, if you make a change to this, that doesn't get copied back into your original text file. So there's this trade-off of like, do you want to reference the code um, on disk and then like have that um, in one place, or do you want to load it in your, in your notebook? Yes. You could, yeah, exactly. Yeah. OK, so that's just a little trade-off if you find yourself running the same code over and over in the same in the different notebooks. 